Hello and welcome back to the fifth and final unit in week one, where we'll be looking at um, different kinds of analytic approaches. The type of analytical approach you take really depends on the type of data that you have, um, that you've collected, and the kind of question that you are trying to answer. There are two types of data, qualitative and quantitative. Qualitative data consists of words or narratives. The analysis of this type of data in, includes highlighting keywords and the identification of themes. For example, um, data captured from a, a focus group to understand um, the participants' perceptions um, the data could be in free form, so it's a narrative and you use qualitative techniques to identify content and identify themes. The data deals with descriptions and can be observed, but not measured. Some examples include colors, textures, smells, tastes, etc. Quantitative data are numerical, and the analysis will involve um, statistical techniques for example, if you analyze a satisfaction survey where participants rated their experience on a scale of 1 to 10, the data is numeric in form and it, it can be measured. You use statistical techniques to draw conclusions about some participants' satisfaction. Um, and Let's go through some examples. These can include length, height, area, speed and time. There are two common types of analysis that are referred to as descriptive and inferential. Descriptive analysis informs you about the basic qualities of the data. It includes basic descriptive statistics such as the range, minimum value, maximum value and frequency. It also includes measures of central tendency such as mean, median, mode, and standard deviation. It tells you what the data you look like, and it helps you to simplify and to summarize data, and, and as well as describe and visualize that data. Inferential analysis uses statistical techniques to analyze whether a pattern in the data is due to chance or due to the intervention that is um, being observed. And what the strength of that um, relationship is can also be seen in there. So the first step is to understand the data distribution. Is it normal or non-normal? Next, if the data are normally distributed, you will um, generally choose from a range of parametric tests. However, if the data are non-normally distributed, you will choose from the set of um, non-parametric tests. You will analyze samples of data and generalize the results to the, the whole population. You will undertake hypothesis testing using statistical testing and possibly make um, predictions um, using, for example, regression techniques um, or others. You'll, you'll learn more about these later on. For inferential statistics, you need to understand the, the data distribution. Is it normal or non-normal? On the left side, you will see a normal distribution. It looks like the bell curve. Um, the majority of the data is clustered around one number or value um, in the middle. Usually when the, the data are normal, you will, change, uh, you will choose from statistical tests called parametric tests. On the right, you will see non-normal distribution. Um, there are several ways a distribution can be non-normal and um, you'll learn a little bit more about these later in the course. This can happen with a small sample size um, or an unusual set of responses, for, for example. Usually if the data is non-normal, you will um, choose from statistical um, tests called non-parametric tests. You will learn more about these later on in the course. A statistical hypothesis is an, an assumption about a population parameter that may or may not be true. Statisticians use a formal procedure called um, hypothesis testing to accept or reject these hypotheses. You will learn about this in more detail later in this course. 
there are a wide range of statistical tests that you can use to test a hypothesis. Some of the common ones are listed here. You will see some of the um, common tests for correlation, um, the comparison of means of variables, and for regression, which uh, an analyzes how the change in one variable predicts the change in another. The tests presented in this slide are called parametric tests and are based on certain assumptions. For example, when running um, tests of a hypothesis for means of continuous outcomes, all parametric tests assume that the outcome is approximately normally distributed in the population. Please note that this does not, does not mean that the data um, in the observed sample follows a normal distribution, but rather that the outcome follows a normal distribution. And that is within the full population, which is not necessarily observed in the outcome. For many outcomes, you may be comfortable with the um, normality assumption, i.e. most of the um, observations are in the, the center of the distribution, while fewer are at either extreme. Also, many statistical tests are robust, which means that they maintain um, their statistical properties even when assumptions are not entirely met. When the sample size is small and the distribution of the, um, of the outcome is not known and cannot be assumed to be um, approximately normally distributed, then alternative tests called non-parametric tests are appropriate. Non-parametric or distribution-free tests mean the test doesn't assume the data comes from a, a particular distribution, like the, the normal distribution we've mentioned before. It can sometimes be difficult to assess whether um, a continuous outcome follows a normal distribution and whether a parametric or a non-parametric test is the appropriate one. The most practical approach to assessing normality um, involves analyzing the distribution of the um, outcome in the sample using a histogram. Non-parametric tests are sometimes called um, distribution-free tests because they're, they're based on fewer assumptions. They do not assume that the outcome is um, approximately normally distributed. However, parametric tests involve specific probability distributions, for example, the normal distribution, and the tests involve estimation of the, the key parameters of that distribution. For example, the mean or difference in the, in the means from the, from the sample data. There are also several statistical tests that can be used to assess whether data are likely uh, to become from a normal distribution and each test is essentially a, a goodness of fit test and compares the observed data to, quanti um, to quantiles of the normal distribution for, for other specified distributions. To summarize, descriptive analysis informs you about the basic qualities of the, the data um, Inferential analysis uses statistical tests to analyze whether a, patter, a pattern in the data is due to by chance or due to the intervention that is being observed, and what the strength of that relationship is. In this course, you'll learn about some of these um, descriptive and inferential statistical techniques and how these um, techniques can be applied and misused. With this, I'd like to close the first week. I hope you enjoyed the first units of this course, and we're happy to get in touch with you in our discussion, um, in our discussion forum if you have any content-related questions. Now, we wish you all the best for the upcoming weeks. We hope you enjoy the course and you enjoy doing the assignments um, going forward week by week. Bye for now.